We're, of course, here at Super Summer Comic Con with Two Geeks Talking, and, of course, the ever-talented, always amazing Rob Archer, who is really amazing in person, I have to admit. Like, you're incredible. Kurt, are you trying to kiss my ass or yes. just get a good interview? I'm, I'm doing both, you know? <laughs> I'm loving it, buddy. <laughs> loving it. I've been tracking you down for the past year. Finally, you had, you had to come down to Windsor for All me to meet Windsor. you. It's crazy. Um, what brought you to Super Summer Comic Con? It's, uh, it's out in the parking lot. It's actually my car. So, um, it brought me all the way here. Just a reminder, <laughs> but uh, uh, as you know, you're ruining my interview. He doesn't realize this show is all about me. It's about me. Nothing else. Me. See what I mean? Me. <laughs> Are you paying attention to this? Windsor Comic Con, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, apparently, one of their one of their guest speakers uh, wasn't able to make it uh, a couple weeks ago, and they were frantically looking. They called the London guys, and they that Rob Archer would make so, a great yeah, addition, and I do my thing here. So yeah, um, this is one of the rare weekends that I'm not traveling, and I'm, I'm actually at home, and I wasn't doing anything, so I thought, you know, I've never been to Windsor, and there's a lot of uh, comic book illustrators, a lot of talent here, and I figured, you know, if anything, like I expect, you know, maybe to meet some fans, like I love meeting my fans, interacting with uh, people, but. I just had a gut feeling that there was going to be an illustrator here that would want to draw me or do something with the con. And before I even started uh, at the VIP party last night, I ended up signing a contract. And I am now the official model and spokesperson for the conduit, which I will be appearing at a lot of uh, different cons and whatnot uh, as a conduit. And I'll be meeting up with uh, Tony Gray uh, once a month uh, for about an hour each time. And he will be drawing me physically for, for the comic book character. For, for the different action scenes and whatnot, so it's another another little thing to put on my uh, on my resume is producing, acting, stunts, modeling. Uh, got some video games coming up that I haven't said. I'm doing some mocap, uh, playing some characters there that are pretty cool, and now I'm a comic book character. So I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to take up crocheting and nail painting pretty soon. I don't know. I'm running out of things to do. Body painting, maybe, or anything like that. You know, whatever I can do on a on a Friday night by myself. You know, <laughs> maybe play. Uh, what's that song in uh, Silence of the Lambs? Uh, some, something horses. <laughs> Put on some lipstick. Have some me time. Rocky Horror Picture Show is next for you. <laughs> no, no, not that far. Just a lipstick. <laughs> Uh, well, obviously, I've enjoyed your work with Lost Girl Defiance. Thank you. Everything that you've, you've done in your career, I, I happen to have seen and followed. So, I'm not stalking you, I just really appreciate your work. Thank you, um, that, that means a lot to me. Uh, what is it about being a 6'6 six, six guy? 285 now. And, and still, okay. you're relevant in the industry. What do you keep doing? I love the challenge. Uh, I love being in the spotlight as well. I love uh, the more fans that I, I gain. Every show, every film that I do um, brings more people gravitating to me. And when I do go to the cons, and a lot of people have seen, you know, I just came back from doing FedCon in Germany. I love doing motivational speaking and inspirational speaking. I have a lot of fans that, that write me with like real everyday problems that are overwhelmed. And I, I love being able to break them down and, and teaching people different ways to look at things, you know, because every problem or every situation or anything in life is a 365 degree radius. Most people look at, at, at everything at a five to 10% degree radius when they have 365 to work with. So I love teaching different people to look at from the opposite side, from the left side, from the right side. You know, if it's all too overwhelming, break it down to three steps. If it's still overwhelming, break it down to five steps. So that, that, that's the, uh, I guess would be the, uh, the bow on the present at, at the end of the day with my acting and everything that I do is being able to, you know, touch people uh, here and knowing, you know, like I've had people that have dropped 40 and 50 pounds because I, I put out a lot of stuff about GMO and fast food and how the government, you know, doesn't give a shit about any of us. It's all about money, about using pharmaceuticals. There, there's a, a homeopathic remedy for absolutely everything that's out there. 
you know, but the, the government wants you, to, you know, taking meds. So I, I like teaching people because so many people are, are, are in a bubble or they've got blinders on because they're caught in the fake infrastructure that the government puts them into. I just like expanding people's minds and teaching them that there's so much more than what they're doing and looking at their problems. As for the acting, I, I did this out of order. You know, I answered like the bonus of what I do. With, with filming, uh, every time I do a role that requires me to have my shirt off, I, I love the challenge of being totally shredded. I'm known as Mr. Abs in the industry. Uh, they, they always know that I'm going to be on point. That I'm always, um, CGI artists and special effects artists love me. Uh, because they don't have to do so much work because I come in with my body. I don't, I'm not a big fan of actors that have to use CGI and prosthetics for their muscles or their abs and whatnot. You know what, you're going to play the role, bring it to the plate. You know, Gerald Butler had his abs all CGI'd for 300. That wasn't him, but everybody thinks it was. No, that's all computer enhancement. I will never do that. I will always do the man work in the studio because I want to look back on what I've done 5, 10, 15, 20 years and say, I gave it 110% because once it's out there, you can't take it back. So knowing that I'm burned into history in time, you know, giving it all for this role or that role. So that's uh, the physicality of it. As for the acting, it's all about uh, becoming better. You know, I, I always want to grow. You know, doing comedy stuff, I love it. I, I can sit there all day long. As long as you have like a beep, beep, a sensor button going on, I can do it all day long. Action, fighting, all that stuff the back of my hand it's the dramatics that I'm, I'm going after is what I really really want to learn you know I tell a lot of uh, new people in on set when we're filming uh, I worked with uh, a gentleman that played uh, a bio man with me in season three of Defiance by the name of uh, Aaron Giberson we we met on that show uh, the one day and we instantly became best friends like same height as me he's like six five six six 285, 290, he's like my, my long lost twin brother yeah. with hair and less tattoos. But it's, it's very, very rare to, to meet some, and we just instantly click, and he's, he's one of my best boys now. But what I told him on set, because he's new and he's getting into stuff, when you're standing around, you're waiting for your lines to go, or you're waiting for this to happen, always keep in mind you're on a set with a lot of A list actors. You know, you're, you're working with people that are the best of the best. So while you're standing there waiting for something to happen, study them because you're going to get the best free education you could ever get. You're learning from the best. So that's, I, I love, you know, with Aaron, I did that and I was saying, watch him and him. Watch how he pulls the whole scene in by his facial expression. Watch how Grant does this. Watch how Julie does that. And he really started paying attention. He came to me, he's like, I'm so happy you told me that. He goes, like, I'm learning this. And then even even myself with working with uh, Jim Murray, who played uh, Pottinger last season. Am I able to swear? He's the most smug fuck I've ever seen on camera. Every time he delivers a line or whatever, I wanted to reach through the camera and smack him in the face. And that's the sign of a good, a great actor. Same as uh, Yaquin Phoenix in, uh, what was... Uh, I'm blowing my thing here, that gla gladiator. There wasn't a minute in that film I didn't want to beat the shit out of him because he was such a whiny little bitch in the movie. But you know what? Nobody could have played that role better. He did that well, the same as Jim Murray did. Now, watching Jim, not only is he precise, like he, he was very, very good with his dialogue, but his facial expression. He could own the whole scene on his facial expression. He could turn the whole scene on his facial expression. And that's something that I taught Aaron. I was like, watch his facial expression. Watch his hand motion, his eyebrows. You can play the whole thing on facial expression, not even off your dialogue. And so, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, season two was really cool. And I, I always love, you know, helping somebody that's eager to, to get through the little spots because I learned the hard way all the way through. So... If I, if I can meet somebody that I'm working with on set that I was like, you know what, this guy's got something, he's going to do good, I'd love to, you know, jump him a few levels and, and just pay attention to this. Um, I don't know if I answered your question or if I just went off and left hey, field. Hey, I'm perfectly that's fine. That's what I do, because left field's a good place to be for me. And I'm perfectly fine with that. That's that's how my show has run I'm for the past seven. Left field, I climb the fence and I'm in the parking lot. Sniffing You're through. selling hot dogs right <laughs> now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone has that one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? 
it wouldn't be acting. I grew up, uh, I grew up very bullied as a kid. I got picked on a lot, all all through public school and, and even high school. And uh, my my big guys, the, the people that I loved, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Now Sylvester Stallone, now that I'm six five and two eighty five, he's about the size of a Tic Tac to me. It's, it's very comical. But I I grew up. Uh, you know, wanting to not be bullied and pushed around anymore. And Arnold, my, my room as a child had Arnold and Sylvester Stallone, Rambo and Commando all over the place. And I, I got into bodybuilding and, and training one so I didn't get picked on, but it was, uh, you know, I had that Arnold digest, you know, with the, the old York dumbbell weights with the gold, with the cement inside, you know, so that, that was my inspirational person. As, as far as actors, uh, my 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 actors that I, I I just think that are absolutely brilliant are Jack Nicholson, uh, Christian Bale, and John Malkovich. Those guys are just wow, like absolutely wow. So like I'll, I'll always watch something that they're doing. Comedy side, uh, Adam Sandler. I love Adam's old stuff. You know all, you know something about Mary the Water Boy. You know uh, the Wedding Singer. Uh, Happy Gilmore, those those mindless, moronic, fun comedies. Any Adam Sandler movie that doesn't have Chris Rock in it, I'm a big fan of. <laughs> Good stuff. At least I'm honest, right? I, I don't, I don't, you know, smother everything with bullshit. I tell you the truth. And that's why we like you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, you're you're professionally successful in your life. You've done so many amazing things in your own life. Do you consider yourself personally successful? No, I, I personally consider myself just Rob. I'm, I'm just Rob. I'm not famous. I'm not this. I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. You know, we all use the same toilet paper and wipe our asses the same. I'm no, I'm no different. You know, the only difference is when people told me I couldn't do something, I didn't, I didn't let them uh, get through to me. When they would tell me, you will never do this, like, watch me. So... At the end of the day, I'm just Big Rob. I'm just a guy that never gave up on his dreams and kept pushing and pushing. And going through what I did is another reason with the inspirational, motivational speaking. You know, being who I am and where I came from, uh, you know, I, I've lived in shelters. I, I grew up in an abusive family. Like, everybody expected me to be in jail after high school. You know, so I'm, I, I believe I'm the most successful out of high school. But that doesn't go to my head. I'm just Rob. That, that's all it is. So... Everybody expected me to go, but I didn't because I didn't give up on myself. And I was the only one that didn't give up on me. So That's very good. I like that. How do you deal with your failures? A lot of alcohol. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, with my failures, I, uh, it's such a, a wide spectrum. But if, if, if it's acting, if it's something that I didn't do, you know, I, I go back to the drawing board and I try to figure out where I went wrong, uh, what I could have done better. Uh, I'll always, uh, I, I'm very, very lucky. I have amazing, talented uh, friends. You know, uh, the show Lost Girl, uh, that show is such a family. I, I've never been involved in a, in a production where everybody's so close and gets together all the time. And you've seen our photos, you know, like, Paul and Chris and Rachel and Manuel, like all of us together. Paul's always Paul's a foodie, so he's always holding these little wine and cheese and what the fuck is that over there kind of little parties. And uh, you know, if if I had problems, you know, that there were when I did the the Fables event. Just as I landed, I, I was so looking forward to seeing London, England, because uh, that's my heritage. Robert James Archer, you know, very prestigious name. I was looking very forward to going around and, and seeing London and my heritage and where I'm from, maybe a castle or two, you know, and uh, using the word chips instead of fries. And as soon as I landed, my agent had sent me a, a massive audition that would have taken up all my time. And we fought half the day back and forth. And I, I was so stressed out. I had tears coming out of my eyes because all I wanted to do was this Fables event and sightsee London. And I ended up seeing, doing the Fables event. It was amazing, amazing fans there. All the rest of my time was spent in my room learning the lines. And I was freaking out because I had nobody to do it with. And as busy as he was, Chris Holden Reed pulled his time aside 
and I had the best acting, schooling, learning lesson ever in my life from Chris. And I, I sent in the sides. I had to do a tape and send it to my agent. And my agent was like, "This is the best. This is the best work you've ever done. Like, you're comfortable. You're very comfortable. You're you're powerful. You're you're, you're just oh my! I'm jumping up and down. I'm so happy." And she was on a side note. Who in the world has Chris Holden Reed as their reader for their line? Like, only you, Rob. But the, it's just, those are the type of people, you know, uh, that, I, that I have that I can resort to when I fail. And it's like, where did I go wrong, okay? The best part, the, the biggest uh, part of success in getting to where you want to be is accepting that failure is a part of success. You have to, you know, fully envelop, uh, envelop that you're gonna fall and hit the ground. You're, you're gonna lick the dirt, you know, but are you strong enough to pick yourself back up and go back in there and do it again? So when I fail, you've gotta be able to take criticism. So it's like, okay, where did I go wrong? What did I, you didn't do this right. You didn't, and even though in my head, what do you mean? That was brilliant. No, because I've got blinders on. I'm looking at it a certain way. They're looking at it from the outside. No, you should have done it this way. So being able to take criticism is, is a massive thing. Uh, Going into an audition room and, and st standing in front of a panel of, you know, sometimes it's three people, sometimes it's eight people in that small little room, and standing in front of them and them just staring at you, judging you, and then you can totally tell they're not impressed with what you've done or they've said, yeah, no, and, and trying not to, like, cry and walk out, you know what I mean? You got to hold your head up and, and walk out there and go back to the drawing board and get ready to do it again. So failure... There's no failure. It's, it's always a learning experience. You never fail. As long as you can see that what you did might not have been what they wanted, but you can learn from it and grow from it, it's not a failure. It's, it's actually an advancement. I love it. I wish my report card in uh, high school and public school was kind of like that. That's not a D, Mom. No. That's progression. <laughs> it means I showed up for the class. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Last question I, I have, well, no, second last question. Um, obviously, our, our good friend Audrey is... Uh, Audrey Smelly Cat, Audrey Smelly my Cat. sweet Audrey, I love her. Yeah. She, uh, she definitely had a question for Hi, you. Hi, Audrey. Bizous, baby. <laughs> so, Audrey, uh, of course, uh, our favorite Smelly Cat, is asked... Uh, when, when Pro Subs, obviously you're you're part of Pro Subs there I'm behind the franchise for Pro Subs, yes. Uh, decided to create Mr. Hyde, the character that you play so well. Uh, what brought on that inspiration? Well, Pro Subs is, uh, is is a leading sports nutrition company with proteins, amino acids, and all all the the big bodybuilding <laughs> supplements. But they've come out with a pre workout that no other company has and they called it Mr. Hyde, basically, because you change into, you know, Mr. Hyde. So the product had been on the market for just a little over two years, and it was doing well, but there's not a lot of hype about it. There's not a lot of people. So they wanted to come up with an actual character for Mr. Hyde. So then that's when uh, TJ, the CEO of the company, called me up, and he pitched this idea, you know, very, very vaguely, about coming up with a character, and they said, you know, you know maybe a black trench coat or something, and... Uh, we talked back and forth because I didn't want it to be kind of like wrestler gimmicky and whatnot. It had to be done a certain way. And so we started, agree, you know, talking about stuff. And I said, let me just leave this with me and let, let me see what I come up with. And I went online and I found the goggles, the gas mask. I found the big chain, uh, the boots. I just started putting together an image in my head on what I thought would look good and what would sell at a, at a convention at, or like at the, the, body, the Europas and all the body, uh, body power shows and whatnot, what would sell. And I, I threw that all his way and they're like, wow, this is really cool. And then I was like, Mr. Hyde doesn't talk. And they're like, there was, there was a few things we're like, well, this and that. And I was like, listen, I'm not just some guy that goes to a gym and is just happy to be here and gets like a free shirt and a shaker cup. I'm an actor, and this this will be a performance. This will be a character that I stay in character for the whole time. I've yet, um, I've done, I believe, five or six shows in the last three months. I've yet to go around as Rob Archer and see any venue, talk to any anybody, 
Hulk Hogan is the only person that I whispered something to, uh, not in Birmingham. But I stay in character the whole time. I don't go out for dinner with them, nothing. And you're, you're not going to get that with anybody else. I take it very seriously as a character that, with what I do. And even if people don't know what it is, they're intrigued because I, I walk around, I'd be weird. But I'm great with the kids, you know, because I remember what it's like. Because everybody, you know, writes me when I post pics with kids and whatnot and saying, oh, you're so sweet, you know, that's so good. Because I get right down on my hands and knees or I'll put them on my knee and I'll take, like, a lot of extra time for them because I know what that was like when I was a child. And me wanting to go and do something or waiting, you know, to, to meet somebody. Like, I remember it was massive for me meeting Mr. Dress Up as a kid, you know. And I will never forget where I came from as a child knowing what that moment is like for them so i want to make it really really special for them so i will take you know if somebody most people get like a minute coming in the booth i'll take five for the kids take extra photos because that'll be branched uh brain, that'll be etched in them forever so it, it's special for me with the kids but the whole mr hyde persona is just seeing the people's looks on their faces or you know like i'm always watching like always always watching i i bounced and ran nightclubs for 18 years so I'm never, you know, like even though I'm looking at you, I'm still watching everything at the side. And I'm the same way at the conventions. Like even people that are too nervous to come into the pro stops booth and I catch them out on the, on the uh, in the laneways and whatnot, you'll always see me, you know, pointing at them and they think it's just like, oh my God, he even noticed me. He stopped in the middle of his thing. So it's just all about, you know, being fun and giving every individual a little bit of time. You know, it's very important. I don't like just neck, neck. I will shake every single person's hand and acknowledge them. You know, I, I think that's that's important. Yeah, nobody's just a number. Everybody, everybody's a person, and I want to treat them like that. Well, then that perfectly leads into my last question. Then here, and I apologize for taking up your time, but oh no, I, I'm enjoying this. Uh, let, let's see this last question. Right. Obviously, the uh, the younger. I'm not going to hold your hand and walk in public if that's yet. <laughs> Um, the younger generation are inspired by what you're doing. Obviously, they're asking you questions and you're acknowledging them, as you just mentioned, because you generally want to. Uh, how can they inspire the generation that follows them? Stop playing video games. Go outside and stop doing stuff uh, and start doing things. But uh, just just learn your learn your craft. You know, become. Don't. I know how to answer this. One of the quotes that pisses me off the most is good things come to those who wait. And that's so far from the truth. Good things don't come to those who wait. Nothing comes to those who wait. Good things come to those who get up off their ass and go and fight for it and want it and do everything they can to have it. That get knocked down and told they can't do it. Good things come to the people that fight and want it. You can end it on that. Last thing then, Rob, thank you again so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a great time at this convention. Thank you, Curtis. I'm so glad that I finally got to connect with you, buddy. Hi, I'm Rob Archer, and you're watching Two Geeks Talking.